Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360. We are live from our news up here at Adesawe Kandai in Accra. My name is Aisha Yakubu. I am Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven insecticide spray and coil. Piccadilly biscuits and my life insurance. Two University of Ghana lecturers implicated in sex for grades investigative piece by BBC Africa Eye. Eleven protesting law students demanding legal education reforms arrested after clashing with the police in an attempt to petition the presidency. Also, technical. Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana declares indefinite strike to press home demands better uh, conditions of service. An executive director of the Institute for Democratic Governance, Dr. Emmanuel Akwete, advocates law to ban governments from initiating new projects in election year. And on the international front, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson tells European Union Brexit ball now in its courts. We bring you the details of these and many more stories, including sports and entertainment, coming up in the next one hour. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now, two University of Ghana lecturers have been implicated in the sex for grades investigations carried out by the BBC Africa Eye. Excepts of the one-hour documentary shows Dr. Paul Kwame Butako of the College of Education and head of the European Studies, Professor Ransford Jampo, in a compromising situation with undercover journalists who posed as students of the University of Ghana. Find girls like you, always vulnerable. Sex for grades. A trailer of the documentary was released ahead of its premiering. Nobody wants to listen, nobody wants to believe victim. It is crazy. I know a lot of people have been abused and nobody is trying to do anything. The investigations conducted by BBC Africa Eye also captured other incidents at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. Switch off this light, lock the door, I kiss you for a minute. For the past year, BBC Africa Eye has been secretly investigating sexual harassment by lecturers at the West Africa's most prestigious universities. The full documentary will be aired tonight on TV3 at 10.30. Now, in his reaction, head European studies at the University of Ghana, Professor Ransford Jampo, who agreed to speak to TV3 but later declined, has served notice to sue the BBC for defamation over the investigative piece. Now, in a statement, he indicated he is the target of an agenda to tarnish his image, insisting he does not demand sex for grades. He said he has been advised not to speak, but his students insist that he says something to clear the air. Remember, we are going to show it live at 10.30 p.m. tonight on TV3. Uh, just so you know, and also reiterate what Aisha has been talking about. BBC's Africa had a documentary for, uh, that's Sex for Grades, uh, where undercover journalists posing as students inside some West African universities to get some information on the sexual favors for grades. Menace has aired with many Ghanaians talking about it. Some students of the Accra Technical University say if the lecturers in the tape are found culpable, they should be made to face the law. They did agree that this situation is not just pertaining at the University of Ghana alone. 
we are the future leaders come to think of it and at this point if we should engage in this or we should trade in sex activities then it means that we do not have any future at all going out there because at the end of the day it is the image of the university let's look at the students of the university when they are done with school taking the certificates of the university outside how are we going to be looked at especially only a few mil so everyone is going to be like oh you had a first class but then it's not genuine. If the lecturer has um, sex with you and he gives you a grade, like after after your university life here, is he going to give you sex for job? It's rather unfortunate. Most of the time we've been hearing about this sex for grade in universities, but we've not like seen any kind of evidence. But this brought about like some concrete evidence to see to show that. Sure, some lecturers do take advantage of what female students for grade. Even if you are a good student, they still just want you to sleep with you and then give you grades. It's like very funny how lecturers who um, just abuse some girls or abuse people and give them grades while we um, are striving hard, learning to make it. They will pass the back door and so I think that is very bad. Sex for grades. University professors and senior lecturers sexually harassing and blackmailing their students. A lecturer will say that if you don't sleep with me, I will not give you my. Who are you? Justin. Yes, I can hear you. For the first time ever, BBC Africa Eye has been secretly filming in some of Africa's most prestigious universities. You will be shocked by what you will see. BBC Africa Eye. Sex for grades. BBC Africa Eye, tonight at 10.30pm on TV3. Definitely don't forget to watch the full documentary exclusively on TV3 at 10.30 uh, tonight. Keep watching TV3. First thing is best in entertainment. There's a good reason to stay awake and just get to see this. But 11 protesting law students were arrested after a clash with the police in an attempt to petition the presidency over reforms in the country's legal education system. A demonstration turned chaotic when the police resorted to the use of hot water and warning shots to disperse the protesters. George Quainin has more. What started as a peaceful demonstration turned chaotic when the police would not allow the protesters to the Jubilee House. Eleven of them were arrested with a cameraman of Yen.com sustaining injuries. It's not an AK-47. The police are saying it's called a shocker or whatever it is. I don't care. But he just started firing. Po, 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 po. I tried recording with my phone. He threatened to, 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 to damage my phone, so I put my phone away. My cameraman was just beside him, and he shot him. The thing hit his hand. And the police around are insisting that it is not a gun. It is not a gun. He has not been shot. They are, they've taken him away in the police car. They claim they are taking him to the police hospital to examine him whether or not he's been, he's been shot or not. The initial plan was to get to the Jubilee house and petition the executive on the challenges existing in Ghana's legal education and that attempt was fought by the police when the protesters got to this very destination as you can see this is one of the shoes of a protester that has been arrested and we are told about 11 of them have been arrested by the police and uh, the members I must say are so frustrated about this development the protesters thereby refused to proceed to the Jubilee house even after the deputy chief of staff Abu Jinapur had asked the police to allow them entry did you endorse what's happening many, this afternoon I don't know what is happening many of them have been arrested, arrested. Many, many of them have been arrested yeah. Yeah. well that's the police people doing their work I don't know anything I just I've just watched you have instructed this. them to come they should come and present their petition the police are not allowed. They earlier marched from the Ghana School of Law to the ministries where they presented petitions to the Chief Justice and Attorney General. They diverted from the original route to mass up at the Ghana Bar Association office where a meeting was ongoing. It is not that people do not know the problem. Everybody wants a solution. But I believe that once you have made your voice heard, the powers that be, the powers that be, my position has been stated clearly in my speech. So just go back to my conference speech, I have said it. 
the protesting law students and sympathizers are demanding reforms in Ghana's legal education system. The SRC president of the Ghana School of Law, Jonathan Alwa, has been arrested. They've been beaten, brutalized. Why? Just because we want justice. Is that how the government is going to treat Ghanaian students? Is that how you deal with our students? You claim to be a listening government. Now is the time for Nanado to show to the Ghanaian people that he listens. Because this is a voice that reflects the shades of opinion in this country. The demonstration is on the back of the recent failure recorded at the Ghana School of Law when only 128 students out of 1,820 candidates who sat for this year's entrance examinations passed. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief of Staff Abu Jinapo has refuted allegations that government agrees to the capping of admissions in the law school. He was reacting to the protests by law students who are calling for legal education reforms. The Chief of Staff um, had instructed me to be on standby to receive a petition from some demonstrators. Therefore, the government has absolutely no difficulty with citizens demonstrating as it is their right in a democratic dispensation and a democratic culture such as ours. And the president was absolutely willing and ready to receive a petition from these demonstrators. And I think that point ought to be made and made very clearly. The matters as they relate between the police and the demonstrators, I'm not fully appraised of, and therefore I will not speak to it. Deputy Chief of Staff Abu Jinapo agreed to calls for continuous reforms in Ghana's legal education. It cannot be the case that the government wants to restrict legal education in our country or restrict the number of people who turn out to be lawyers. It cannot be. In any event, as I've stated, the government has no mandate to regulate legal education. And I heard the Chief Justice. I'm not too sure that what the Chief Justice meant was mass production of lawyers. What she actually was speaking to was quality of lawyers, was the standards. And all of us must be concerned about standards when it comes to professions in our country, be it medical doctors, lawyers, accountants, auditors, or whatever. We all have to be insisting on the production of such professionals who meet the requisite standards and global standards, because uh, without that, we're going to have a failed society. So we're heavy on this, indeed. I don't know if more of you have been uh, sending us your messages on our various social media platforms. It's TV3 Ghana on Facebook. But Jonathan Aloha is the SRC president of the Ghana School of Law. He joins me in the studio uh, to, to, to narrate exactly what happened. Jonathan, it's good to have you. Now, I, I do know you were also arrested amongst uh, three, uh, the 13 who were arrested, I, we, we understand. And have you all been released? Yes, the as it stands now, we are all out of custody. I see. And, and on bail? Yes, we, we, we are on police inquiry bail. I see. What charges were preferred? That, that's if you do know. Yes, um, so the caution statement said in it that we're being charged for unlawful assembly and conduct conducive of a breach of the peace. What, 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 what did you, I mean, did you have legal counsel to understand what exactly they meant by unlawful assembly? Because from what we do know, you said you had permission from the police to do this. No, you see, we, we didn't need permission. I mean, that's the position of the law. But we had notified them, which is what the law requires. We notified them 10 clear days ahead of time. If you take the weekends out, that's eight days. The law requires five days priorities. What happened was, after we notified the police, they made an attempt to prevent us from demonstrating. And so we wrote to them and told them that person one to our initial letter arrangements were far advanced. People were traveling from Cape Coast, from Kumasi. They had made arrangements and so it was practically impossible to prevent the peaceful demonstration. And so we're going to go ahead after having notified them. It would interest you to know that um, today, when we're about filing out, the police um, appeared with over 20 men, indicating that they didn't want us to go on this peaceful demonstration and that they didn't have the men for it. And our position was, we understand our rights, and we know that we have complied. We, we are legally justified in marching. And so we, we proceeded regardless. And your, your people were with us. We, mm -hmm. we were very peaceful. We went through the high streets. So, so w w what triggered the firing of the warning shots, the w use of the water cannon, and then also I understand there was firing on some tear gas as well, which led to some of your students who were asthmatic reacting, I, I understand. 
So the police said they didn't have the men for us. And so the entire way, as I was saying, we went by ourselves. We organized ourselves, we filed, we sang, and then we walked peacefully from the AG's office to the Ghana Bar Association office. And then on our way to the Jubilee House at Akwaje Interchange around Afrikiko, we were confronted by the full complement of the police with their, you know, their vehicles and everything. And um, they stopped us. And we had already sent someone ahead of us to let them understand that we are marching peacefully and we need, you know, at least we can even have a delegation go. They refused that. So in the heat of the moments, we were trying to calm our students down and ask them to move to one side of the road mm -hmm. so we can negotiate at least and get a delegation to present our petition. It happened too fast. Before we knew it, we were spraying the, the water cannons and they were firing firing shots and a number of people were hit by plastic pellets. And, um, you know, so I was, I, was, I was in the middle because I was trying to get everybody to calm down and move. And so somebody came to me and said, Press those, they are arresting some of us for no reason. And I, I was alarmed. As a leader, I had to find out why they were picking up some of my people. So that's how you approached them. Yeah, that's and how I got arrested. And you were also the eventually arrested. And uh, yeah. they had 13 of you in custody. Yeah, they had 13 of us in custody. I, I see. And, and could you confirm that some of your students, I mean, your colleagues also reacted to to the firing of the tear gas? We understand some of them had to be rushed to the hospital as well. There's, there's a lady who had an asthmatic seizure from UPSA. I understand she's doing well now. There, there, there was a, a gentleman, I think he's a media person, who was shot with a plastic pellet and they said they were taking him to the police hospital. He was actually bundled together with us when they arrested us. And um, I think, I, I don't know if he has, he has sought medical care yet. And there are a number of casualties. I've seen on social media the, a lot of people who were hit with the plastic pellets and all of that. Jonathan, thank you. But, I mean, now we, we, we get some responses from the presidency, at least, what the Deputy Chief of Staff has been talking to us about. We wait to see what the coming days will bring to what you've done today, but extremely grateful for joining us this evening. Jonathan Alua is the president of the Ghana School of Law, uh, indeed, uh, joining us in the studio on this. And we'll be monitoring and getting some responses for you, especially in the coming days. So stay with us here on 3FM and also on TV3, uh, also on uh, Onia 95.1 and on Connect 97.1. We're committed to this, getting some responses for you. But former president, John Mahama, is calling for the expansion of the country's legal education system. Uh, the NDC flag bearer and executives of the party who called on the Ghana Bar Association noted the high demand for legal services, but stressed that quality should still be paramount. Call on the Ghana Bar Association by the former president and the NDC party executives is part of an ongoing interactive dialogue with professional bodies, civil society and faith-based organizations. The party chairman Samuel Ufusu Ampofo said the dialogue with the various groups would enable the party to take into consideration their challenges and make inputs in its 2020 manifesto as it gears up for the elections. Former President Mahama expressed concern about the low students' intake and wants them to be given a fair hearing since demand for legal representation had shot up. It is a matter that affects thousands of students and I think that by extension their families are concerned because a lot of investment have gone into these students to get this far. I'm sure if we look around the world, there will be countries that have come to this same, you know, stage. And we need to look at best practice. How did they resolve it? If you look at the demand for legal services, it is there from the analysis I made. I mean, the rural areas, there are no lawyers working. You go to certain parts of this country, and there are two, three lawyers, active lawyers, in a whole region, you know. And so, how do we expand, you know, legal education without compromising quality. He bemoaned the inadequacy of courts, making citizens to travel long distances to access legal services. It is important that justice is available to the generality of our population. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Depending on where you are geographically in this country, you can have access or be denied access, both in terms of the availability of the points of contact with the justice system or in terms of representation when you have to get into contact with the system. 
the NDC flag bearer urged the GBA to take interest in reviewing portions of the 1992 constitution to reflect the current socio-economic transformation. President of the Ghana Bar Association, Anthony Forson, said the mass failure of the law students could not have been deliberate. Preparations were done in anticipation of the explosion in numbers. So it, it, it's a bit worrying that people think that there was a deliberate attempt to fail people. When we were passing LI 2355, Parliament told us that we should take out the interviews. At least, if the interviews had been left, many more people would have had a second opportunity to go through the interview process and get. So it is not the fault of the GLC that there is restriction. There is nothing like protocol in admission. It's pure performance. He expressed the association's readiness to work with the party. Some more stories. The Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana has embarked on an indefinite strike to press home demands of better conditions of service for its members. At a news conference in Accra, President of TUTAG, Dr. Solomon Kilson, said the strike has become necessary since government has failed to fulfill its promises after several engagements with the association. This year, the association threatened to embark on a strike if government failed to migrate its members onto the public university salary structure. President of TUTAG, Dr. Solomon Kilson, noted despite an audit in October last year, their demands have not been met. TUTAG has been left with no choice but to embark upon an indefinite strike action to press home our demand on government to implement the conditions of service of public universities for staff of technical universities and the release of the NAB report by NCT. TUTAG insists it had followed all the due processes for the resolution of their concerns and is hopeful the industrial action will get them the desired results. The NCT, as part of the migration process, has reviewed the scheme of service of TUs above the standards in other public universities in Ghana. Indeed, an iron fist has been applied to TU standards. Yet, when it comes to receiving the emolument of the university lecturer, it still remains a mirage. The strike will be undertaken by staff of all technical universities in the country. We're also live here on News 360. We're also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on 3news.com, DSTV Channel 279. Stay with us. There's business news coming up next. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. It's time for business. My name is Nanikia Mensah Brampa. Beginning with tonight, Executive Director of Institutes for Democratic Governance is advocating a law to ban governments from initiating new projects in the election year. At the Graphic Stambic Bank breakfast meeting in Accra, Dr. Emmanuel Akwete explained such a law would avert budget overruns. Speaking on the theme, election cycles, democratic governance, and fiscal stability, lessons for Ghana, the panelists agreed on competencies at all levels of governance, especially the sub-national level. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete acknowledged the four-year election cycle is short, but making it six years is not the solution to the country's developmental challenges. We need to reform the system so that the election pressures do not lead to economic behaviors of government, you know, that undermines whatever they've achieved. The old work where between the four years, the two years between, they try to stabilize things, the economy grows somewhat, come the election year, everything goes. And it looks like we become, we can't control ourselves in election year. So people have tired fresh roads and they lost. So that message is there. The electorate wants to see consistent progress in economic management. He noted what is critical is to set preconditions. Other than that, a six-year electoral cycle will increase frustrations. There are all sorts of irrationalities that need to be cleared out of the system. And I think we are getting there. It's the dynamic. It's the pressure on you. I mean, why, do you, why are you going to sit there to lose elections? 
when you know what is in the pipeline and so it's, it's a structural problem an associate professor at the economics department of university of ghana professor eric osei sb underscored the need for the local authorities to be resourced to be fiscally independent and accountable owing to the possible election of mmdces it might not be too big but if every household is paying something little if every plot is paying something little to the local government and the local government are able to account there's an issue of accountability there's issue of capacity at that local level because there's one thing collecting and then one thing also properly managing what you have collected the graphic stambic bank breakfast meetings are aimed at raising pertinent issues and proper solutions to inform national policy and the Made in African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo has been held in Accra to celebrate innovation and encourage the consumption of cocoa products. The event, which attracted exhibitors from Ghana and Togo, is expected to grow into a sub-regional cocoa fair. The event was under the auspices of the Ghana Export Promotion Center and Know Your Cocoa Foundation. It was also to generate new business ideas and talent in value addition to the cocoa bean. With a combined population of 1.2 billion people, I can imagine the opportunities that will be available for our cherished exhibitors and operators in the value added cocoa space to export their products to consumers within the continent. However, the benefits of this may not come to them automatically as it calls for preparation and the ability to compete. Delivering the keynote address on behalf of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, in Tim Donko noted, Coco has the potential of generating more revenue for the nation. I am certain that ultimately some of the products from this expo will help derive the maximum revenues from our major export crop. The three-day event included a three-day forum on prospects of the cocoa industry in West Africa. The global value chain of cocoa is worth over 100 billion US dollars, yet Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire manages only 5 billion US dollars, though the two countries make up majority of the world's suppliers of cocoa beans. In Ghana, some 800,000 farms and households receive 60% of their annual income from the cash crop. All right, so uh, let's move away from issues on commodities and look at technology. Well, Franco Trading Enterprise has unveiled its innovative premium quality branded LED television sets. Now, the affordable 18-month warranty sets are available nationwide. Franco Trading Enterprise has become a technology trading giant in Ghana over the past few years and thrilling consumers with cutting-edge designs. The new Franco TV sets offer users the opportunity to enjoy television viewing and enhance one's living space with added lifestyle values. Franco over the years have been listening to our customers. We've been in this business for more than 15 years. Uh -huh. So over the years we had a feedback from our customers that why don't you establish a plant here and then brand it Franco phone, Franco TV. So we thought it wise, oh, okay, if we are serving our customers and our customers are demanding for it, why not? Let's give it a thought. And then, lo and behold, we brought Franco TV. The new set is spreads up to a billion color and has revolutionary picture quality. The 32 inch comes at 650 Ghana cities. The 40 inch comes at 900 cities. But the good thing is when you order online, you can place an order via our app, either on uh, Play Store or the App Store, which is the iOS. Both orders comes with a discount. The retail manager explained the features. The TV is a LED TV. A LED TV gives more of brighter colors. It's ultra slim. That means we're using a very slim LED panel for the, the screen. Some of the features being a 4K feature and some of them being a 720p feature and others being also 1080p USB port it's up to 3.0 USB bandwidth strength or standard about 3 HDMI ports on the TV Franco Trading Enterprise provides high quality mobile phones and accessories laptops TV set digital cameras and many other electronic devices 
In other ventures, Volte Ghana Limited has introduced its new twist bottle uh, as part of its goal to drive the recycling message and invite consumers to be part of their eco-friendly journey. The new twist bottle has 7% less plastic, which gives consumers the ease of twisting the bottle after consumption. The new bottle twist is now the identity of Voltic as it responds to the ever-changing consumer needs and position Voltic as a brand with purpose. The company is committed to refreshing Africa every day and making the continent a better place for all. Voltic has been in Ghana for more than 24 years and it was time for us to change the packaging. So easier to segregate, easier to recycle. Reggae dancehall artist Livingstone Eches Satikla, popularly known as Stoneboy, who was unveiled the brand ambassador of Voltic Ghana, stressed how Voltic has reduced less amounts of plastic in their latest rebranded Voltic Twist bottle. You can actually twist it to, t to make it very small, pack it up, recycle it, and then it goes back into the system, but it doesn't go and choke all these things. I beg the whole of Ghana to walk. Come on board. Go buy Vortic because Vortic is the only one that has the twist bottle that you can actually twist to be small and keep away from, you know, the environment. Vortic Ghana, in line with its unbridled commitment to recycling, remodeled its bottle into an eco-friendly pack affirming Coca-Cola Company's 2030 campaign towards a world without waste. Vortic knows that they are part of a larger issue, but unlike other brands, what they do is actually commit funds to solve the issue, to be part of the solution rather than just ignoring it. Number one is a new bottle, less plastic, so it's actually a better bottle than the rest of uh, the competitors. And also they support us in actually aggregating volume. So through their support, you have been able to generate more than 800 tons in one month alone of PET that's been removed out of the system and can be put to new use. Volte Ghana Limited is a unique brand that has remained the market leader for 21 years. It engages the packaging and distribution of Voltic natural mineral water and the distribution of the Club Minerals range of drinks since 1995 with one facility at Midia. And uh, just before I wrap up, a statement coming in from the receiver of the defunct uh, savings and loans companies. Well, he has said that some depositors of the defunct firms are yet to submit their proof of debt forms to enable them retrieve their money. And uh, well, consequently, it is the intention of the receiver to extend the period for depositors to submit their POD forms to accommodate the needs of depositors who are yet to do so. And uh, the notice is given that depositors who have not yet submitted their claim forms should do so uh, by or before Friday 18th October 2019 for validation. You can check 3news.com for the detail of this particular one just coming in. But that's it for the business segment. My name is Nanikia Minsabrabek. Right, contestants in Ghana's most beautiful took turns to share their views on the controversial comprehensive sexuality education at CSC, who generated a heated debate across the country last week. Whether to teach a new curriculum that's going to tell the children more about sex and sexuality, uh, where would you stand? Would All ten remaining contestants had equal opportunities to share their thoughts on the purported introduction of sex education and the level at which it should be introduced. Making the first appearance on stage for the night was Upper East Regional Representative Aisha, who was tasked to assist her nephew through a school assignment on sex education. She noted teachers and parents have a shared responsibility in educating their children. These days, children are very curious. But as you teach the child sex education, you are inculcating in the child some values in your home. Every home, every parent has values. And I'm sure that the more you teach the child and you win the mind of the child, then you win the heart of the child as well. Having been a victim, Oti Regents Nana is all for the introductions of CSE in schools. However, she believes basic school pupils are too young for such information. Hence, its introduction at the secondary school level would be of great value. For SAR, comprehensive sexuality education at an early stage will go a long way to keep young people informed when faced with any form of harassment. Most people 
people don't even know that if I'm talking to Johnny and I touch Johnny's breast or Johnny's buttocks, I am harassing Johnny. You can't touch my own. No, I won't. I won't harass you. <laughs> if all these things are taught and are encouraged, in our societies, I believe it's going to help. At the end of the three-hour presentation, Aisha emerged star performer, while Northeast Region's Yaya was adjudged best costumed for the night. I feel super excited. Like, I don't know what to say. I, I want to say thank you to God Almighty for making this possible. I was just being real. I just told myself it was going to be a discussion. I was just going to talk from my heart. I wasn't going to write any script to memorize anything, but I will just speak from my heart, and that is what I did. The show ended in jubilation as the remaining 10 ladies got off the eviction hook. You know, when I initially heard this song, I thought it was Banku, Banku. But why would anybody think Banku? Oh yeah, Bukum Banku, you know, something like that. Okay. But what do you think they're saying now? It's Zanku. Zanku. <laughs> So congratulations to the ladies. It was eviction free last night, you know, and they are going into another week, you know, so they have to keep at their best, keep doing what they're doing and get it right. I'll spare you of this, but please, let's go ahead. What do you have to do? Also, watch the full documentary exclusively on TV3 of the BBC Africa Eye. You don't want to miss the revelations. It's on tonight at 10.30 p.m. Also, keep watching TV3 First in News, Best in Entertainment. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Aisha Yakubo. I am Alfred Okansing. Good evening.